Welcome back. I am Roy with Rugged Badger Racing and Team Parts Badger. And here is our 80 hours to Gingerman Champ Car Endurance Race Car. We're getting this prepared for Gingerman uh, International Raceway coming up in April. 80 hours total for the project. We have 66 hours remaining and we are behind schedule. The bushings are taking a little longer uh, to get done. So while those are being worked on, we're, we have some other projects we gotta dive into. So today, I want to go through the front end, get everything cleaned up, uh, go through the, the steering, the steering rack, make sure everything's good to go there, make sure everything's torqued and safe. Uh, I want to go in, I want to drain the oil system, and then if we have time, I want to make sure we have the uh, right flywheel, the right clutch, uh, make sure we have a new throw out bearing, things like that for when the engine does come. We're ready to get that prepped, get the transmission on, get the engine back in the car. We also have the new flex plate, so we'll go through and modify the flex plate uh, just get that prepared as well. So let's get started. Now the fun part, let's start cleaning. All right, got the front of the car all cleaned up, uh, some frame, uh, both bottom side, top side, as well as these areas around here. Um, did an inspection, everything looks uh, pretty good for the most part. Uh, they did a lot of seam welding. Uh, it seems like this is pretty well reinforced. It seems like it has all the updated brackets and things like that welded together. Subframe seemed in really good condition. I didn't see any cracking or anything like that. I did see some areas where they did have to modify this, I believe to fit the Ecotech. This area right down here, looks like maybe they took a hammer to it and a little bit of a grinder. And then this little notch right here as well. Um, something I don't really like is these uh, brake lines here. Uh, this one's a, well, what is that? That's rear brake line. This is one of the, the front passenger side brake line. And these get covered in oil because the oil is routed right here, which sits right next to the header. So I think I'm gonna wanna relocate that. Probably not part of this project, but I'm not going to want this oil um, to be right next to the header. Uh, that's just a, a, a bad combination there for potential fire hazard. So ideally I can find some space over here and move it. That's not great because that's the heavy side of the car. I actually don't want to put um, a ton of weight on that side, but it's better than uh, potential fire. So now I'm going to move on to the steering rack, um, which you see here. Looks like this is the updated uh, 99 style rack and I have two bolts here. And then there's also gonna be one in the interior of the car. And I think I wanna pop these out and drill them. Uh, drill and wire those, uh, cause if those come loose, you're gonna have a bad time. And then for the steering rack, I'm gonna uh, remove those, make sure they're all clean. I'm gonna put them down, uh, torque them to spec with Loctite, uh, just to make sure nothing comes loose with the steering since I'm here and everything's cleaned up. There's gonna be some dirt under there. I'm just gonna clean that up as I go. So I'll get started. So I'm glad I took those bolts out. So a couple things uh, with these steering rack bolts. So both of them are really greasy. I don't like that. There's dirt, there's grime, there's grease. There's no way these things, um, even if they were torqued to spec, that they'd actually be to spec. And that's your steering input shaft. And at a track like Sebring, these things can vibrate loose. And if you look this one in particular, I don't know if you can see it on camera, uh, but the threads uh, are actually uh, wore down right there. And that's probably because it was flanged out, um, kind of like a V. And then when you bring the bolt pushes in, so it was actually putting stress on the threads um, in the middle of this bolt. Could also be bolt stretch. Maybe it was over torqued at some point, uh, but the threads definitely look goofy. So with these, I'm gonna try to find new hardware. I know mine have flanges. Uh, I do have a set of new hardware um, in this size, but I'm gonna try to find an appropriate bolt. And then I'm gonna clean the crap out of these things with uh, brake clean and get those threads nice and dry before I uh, find new bolts, drill the heads, uh, then I'm gonna Loctite torque to spec, and then I'm gonna wire these things down. All right, so here we're looking at the steering shaft. And when I turn this over, cup isn't properly seated inside of um, the receiver here. And you can look, it's it's pretty mangled on this side. So what I wanna do before I put that bolt in, and that's probably why the bolt uh, had the, the threads that were strained. So I'm gonna try to reposition this. I'm gonna try it without loosening the rack because the upper steering rack has another ball joint and that actually can move 
you can see the play here. So I'm gonna try just tapping this up to get this in the proper position. See the shaft moving. Let's see if I can try to hold the shaft. Well, it's just about right. And then the lower, the lower on the rack is just fine. That's perfect. So I have my bolts. My bolts are drilled. I'm gonna add a lock nut. I got these cleaned up and I'll go ahead, put some red Loctite on here with the lock nut, torque these to spec, and then I'm gonna use uh, safety wire to wire these up. And it looks like I need a new glove as well. See, I'm using Loctite red on this. Specification on this is 14 to 19 foot pounds. And that's gonna be on the, I believe all Miata steering racks for the NA and NB. Okay, so both those are torqued to spec. Let me just confirm. It's hard to see the crush washer or the uh, lock washer, but I can see on this side, this is pressed all the way down, so that's good to go. So these need safety wire yet. And then I am going to uh, remove the steering rack bolts, uh, make sure those are cleaned, and then get those retorqued with Loctite as well. All right, took a wire brush to the hardware. I cleaned underneath the rack, I cleaned the threads. When I broke this hard way away, it was maybe 10, 15 foot pounds. Specification on this is uh, high 50s to low 70s. So I'm gonna torque these to 65 foot pounds. Now that these are nice and clean, I can apply Loctite. Everything's steering, I'm just gonna do Loctite red. It's all steel into steel. Um, so I'm not really concerned about damaging the threads if I have to remove it. Hardware overall looks good, uh, but no Loctite was used and then <laughs> it was not torqued down. Um, keep in mind, I did clean these threads. Uh, so I used brake clean to make sure these threads are nice and clean um, so that this adheres. So the steering rack, you have a common issue uh, because this area gets so much oil, whether it's oil pan, front main, you got the cam seals, even filling oil. It makes its way down to this area and it really likes filling these holes. So if they're filled with oil, the Loctite isn't going to adhere. In this case, the former owner didn't even use Loctite. So this was a big issue. Um, I believe this is a new steering rack Something else about this, I need to add plugs. It has uh, all for the power steering lines. This was removed, but dirt and grime and things like that can get in here. Overall, the rack feels really good, so I don't think that's occurred yet, but I'm gonna wanna make sure that I can get these lines uh, connected so that pressure can move from one to the other just fine and no dirt and grime gets in. I'm gonna have to find out what the threads are and get that ready to go. Get these tan tight. Now with the steering rack, it does have a torque sequence. So it's driver rear, passenger rear, driver front, passenger front. And I have the torque wrench set to 65 pounds, which is substantially more. Just gonna get these seated up. There we go. So I'm gonna torque driver rear first and passenger rear. There we go. Oh. All right, there we go. So this is all set. I just have to add safety wire. Then I feel good about the steering rack. So the motor mount over here, you see I also have uh, different hardware on a single mount. So I'm gonna wanna get that swapped out to common hardware before the motor goes back in, but I have a little bit of time for that. We have 64 hours remaining. Uh, we are ready to clean up these oil lines. We're gonna depressurize the system. Uh, we're gonna check over that oil, make sure there's no gunk, see if there's any additional cleanup needed. So, so far I've taken the lines that were attached to the engine. I took them off the engine. It is incredibly difficult to do that without taking off the intake manifold. Really silly design. Maybe I can think of something there to make it a little bit easier. I have them connected. And what I noticed when I was cleaning the front end is the accu sump is currently pressurized and it's pressurized over 120 PSI. Uh, which is pretty impressive. I don't even know how the engine was able to generate that much pressure without the relief valve going off. Nonetheless, it does have an electronic solenoid. We have the battery disconnected. So what I did, I went ahead and cut 
um, the connector at one of the joints. So this is the hot connector uh, for the solenoid. I have a Milwaukee M12 battery ready to go. I've already connected the ground. So what we're gonna do is attach power that'll trigger the solenoid. Once the solenoid triggers, hopefully these lines will flush with two quarts of oil that's in here, all the way through this into this one gallon jug. And if I remember, there's four quarts in a gallon, so hopefully we're gonna be all right with a gallon jug and a two quart AccuSum. I hope we don't make a big mess, uh, but we'll find out. Maybe we have a bad gauge on the AccuSum. The AccuSum is down to 60 PSI. I have a feeling that the gauge is bad. Um, but it seems like everything drained. That worked way better than I thought it would. Um, I don't think we made a mess. Yeah, let's get this uh, let's get this all cleaned up and then let's look through the oil, see if there's any nasty in there. All right, just wrapped up the oil system. I'm really excited about how well that went. Budgeted about two hours. I think it got it done in uh, under 45 minutes, which is great. The AccuSump is emptied. I checked over the oil, the oil looks great. So I don't really have any concerns about these lines anymore uh, and getting this cleaned out. I removed the gigantic oil filter. I can figure out what the heck that thing is, uh, get some replacements ordered. Uh, also on the AccuSump, I confirmed the gauge actually malfunctioned. So there is a relief valve um, where you preload pressure and you want to preload about 10 PSI, I think. Um, so in this case, uh, it had pressure, not a lot, when I let out pressure and the gauge remained at about 60. So I don't think we had 120 uh, PSI. We probably had something around 60 PSI, which makes a lot more sense um, in that system. And I think the gauge just isn't zeroed, which is fine. But oil system complete. Another another hour off the uh, the timeline here. So next we're gonna move on to uh, likely uh, transmission over here. I'm gonna figure out the uh, flywheel situation, the flex plate situation, get all that queued up so it's ready to go for when the motor arrives. All right, let's figure out what's going on with the clutch and flywheel assembly. So I have a uh, 1.6 liter Miata setup, a 1.8 liter Miata setup here uh, with a stock flywheel. I have what came on the car, which I believe is a 1.8 liter, even though some of the documentation says it's a 1.6 liter. Maybe that's just the um, their one piece. And then I believe this is the setup that came off of the old parts badger car, which is a um, slightly lightened steel flywheel with a Exidy pressure plate. Now, the pressure plates, when you go heavy duty, like flying Miata, or I also have an ACT one here, they are a lot heavier. So we were running just a normal Exidy OEM uh, pressure plate with a organic disc, somewhat similar to this ACT organic disc here. And uh, we did that largely because of weight. Now that we're running more torque, I wanna make sure I have a 1.8 liter. And I also wanna make sure that uh, I have a, a heavier duty pressure plate. And I'm really hoping that this setup here, which is a brand new ACT uh, pressure plate and clutch disc. And I have no idea when I bought this or uh, what I bought this for, because not only do I have Miatas, I also have a Mazda 323 GTX Turbo, which runs the same BP motor. So this might've been from that project. It might've been from a Miata project. So I'm gonna look at part numbers, try to figure that out. 1.6 liter is out. Obviously I'm not gonna do the stock setup here. This was in our spares bin, just in case needed something. I don't need the stock flywheel. This is what came on the car. And the question is what, uh, what flywheel do I wanna end up using if I do use this ACT disc? So what I'm gonna do, uh, I actually have the pressure plate slightly mounted here. So I'll pop that off. I'm gonna take a look at the two flywheels to figure out which one I wanna do, get some measurements, make sure this is good to go and get a complete setup. Most importantly, I do have a brand new throw out bearing which I'm happy about. I got a bunch of old ones too. Uh, obviously I'll throw out the worst one and then keep the other one as a spare. Um, but got a brand new one, which I'll need. I'll also need a pilot bearing. So I'm gonna check over, see if I have a new one of those around. If not, I'm gonna get one of those on order for this setup. So I'm gonna dive in, see what I'm looking at uh, as far as flywheels, put a combination together uh, and, and make sure it's ready to go for when the engine comes so we're ready to mate up the transmission. So I did some research, 
we have a uh, Exidy lightweight flywheel and we have the ACT flywheel here that came on the car. Now the ACT flywheel, uh, the surface of this is pretty rough. You can physically feel that it's not flat. So this would have to go out and get resurfaced anyway. This one feels great. Um, what I think I can do is just hit this with sc some Scotch-Brite and this will be ready for a new disc. It is missing an alignment pin, so I'll have to get one of those. Um, I also confirmed that the ACT clutch kit in here, so I have a heavy duty pressure plate and then I have a street disc, a performance street disc. Um, this should be able to handle the torque and this will be ready to go on this assembly. And my plan will be uh, to get this resurfaced as a spare use the Fly Miata pressure plate, which this actually feels pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is probably take one of my old discs because this disc is pretty wore down. Um, and, and like I said, I really don't like these ceramic ones because they're really grabby and it can shock the drivetrain. So I'll probably end up using one of the Exidy ones given that the heavy duty pressure plate from Fly Miata um, should be uh, a lot uh, grabbier and be able to support a lot more torque even with the OE type disc. And then worst case scenario, if we need a, a spare assembly, we'll have that at the track. All right, let's talk about hardware. In particular, when we're looking at the flywheel, because the flywheel is gonna be spinning at 6,000 RPM plus for eight hours at a time, you know, in a 24 hour race, it's 24 hours. Uh, there's a lot of weird vibrations taking place. Um, that hardware, it's absolutely critical that uh, it's torqued evenly, it's torqued to specification, you're not stretching a bolt, you're not under torquing a bolt, that all the bolts uh, that are there are all to the same torque so that one doesn't back out and then you, you have a big problem on your hands. So. Um, I just got done prepping the hardware. Let me show you what I did. On these big bolts here, uh, these are the uh, what they use to hold the flywheel on. So I went with a wire wheel, uh, cleaned these up after I cleaned them with brake clean. Uh, these were zinc plated, you can see that on the head. The wire wheel definitely took off that plating. It's a very thin plating, that's not gonna take this out of tolerance or anything. What I don't like is the washers. So this actually had a washer that wasn't like the other five. That's a problem. And the other five are also really soft. So I don't know if I'm gonna stick with these uh, these washers. I'm probably gonna move over to a much uh, harder grade of washer. Uh, cleaned up the, the, the flywheel boss that adapts the Ecotech motor to the Miata flywheel. So clean that up. I still gotta figure out the, the tap I need here. I'm gonna chase these threads, make sure these are nice and clean. Now over to the pressure plate bolts. These had uh, washers on them, the split lock washers, but they were all collapsed. So I went to my hardware kit here. This is all M8 JIS standard hardware. Just ordered that for McMaster car. This is stuff that was still good that came off of the Miata uh, or different projects and things like that. So this is really handy. I use this for the steering column and the steering shaft to lock that in place. I also have the split lock washers. I don't have other washers, which would be helpful over here. Now this is the M8 kit. I also have one for an M6, an M10, and an M12. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go with this one. New lock washers on here that are JIS standard. So I feel good about these. These are gonna be good to go. I'll clean this up. Now something that's interesting is this is a much coarser thread than the factory thread. And that's gonna affect how this thing torques. Where this, you need much more revolutions to achieve the same depth inward versus this. So I might take a look at the torque spec on these bolts and see what they can handle in a 10.9 standard. Um, and I might adjust the torque spec accordingly versus using the factory torque spec, which is actually for this bolt in particular. I'll finish cleaning that up, make sure hardware is ready to go, and then I'm gonna move on to the transmission. All right, transmission time. So here I have the new transmission that we got from Mazda. Has sensors in it, which is great. But what I'm gonna do is pop these out. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of bright stuff on here, uh, just to make sure that these don't back out. Uh, we have had it where these bolts start backing out um, just because of vibrations. So I'm gonna wanna make sure, at, at a minimum, these sensors. Uh, we have some, these are detents here. I don't wanna touch those necessarily. Definitely the, the fill and drain plugs when we do those. 
Now what's cool about this, this actually included a boot, this included a new fork here or actuator for the throwout bearing. It also included a throwout bearing, which I thought was pretty cool. It's already greased up, ready to go. So this seems like a really nice setup. Even has some oil in here. Uh, I'm not sure if they have oil in, in the back here. If I pop this off, if I'm gonna see oil come out of the back. So I'm gonna be careful with that. But on the transmissions that go with the Ecotech kit, you actually have to grind out the bell housing. So what I'm gonna do is try to get that measured up on this one, figure out where I need to grind, and then start getting uh, that material removed from the bell housing of this new transmission. So unfortunately, I don't know the state of either transmission, the one that came in the car or the one out of the car. I did uh, find the original description, and one of these transmissions was rebuilt in Texas, I assumed it was the transmission that was in the trunk of the car. But when I check that transmission, I'm getting really weird resistance in the input shaft that has me concerned about the state of whatever's going on with that one. Now the transmission that we took out of the car seems fine, um, but it definitely is it's, it's dirty, it's covered in oil, it's been used for a while, and I really don't want to risk it. So I'm going to be using the new transmission, um, that way I know what I have, uh, it came from Mazda and then the transmission that came out of the car, the oil did look good, so that will probably become a, a backup transmission because it's already prepped. Uh, but for now, let's get this thing prepared. So, and my flex plates here. This is the stock flex plate uh, that came on the engine. I have a brand new flex plate I ordered, and then I also have one that I ordered off of eBay. Now I need to prep these by grinding off the thin uh, metal layer uh, that's on top here. I need to just grind away these spot welds. Uh, what's interesting is that the one that was actually on the car didn't have that. Uh, and when I look at it, it's actually not flat either. <laughs> So you have um, a little bit of material that's sticking up here that would probably prevent this thing from sitting flush. So I'm really curious as to what exactly happened there. Uh, maybe that's part of the reason why it cracked. Uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the grinder, get these, uh, these things prepped up so we can move on to the next steps. These are nice and prepped, ready to go. Uh, time to move on to the next item. 